Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to continue from where we left off, and I want to answer a really important question about complements with NFAs. So I have three NFAs right here, and what I want to do is I want to form the complements, so the complement machines. And what do I mean by this is to take these two machines and swap which states are final and which ones are not final. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick copy of all of these. And I'm going to convert them all to purple color so that I know it's the copy. And I'm going to switch which states are final. So this one is going to be the only final state. That one's not final. And now Q1's final. And actually maybe I need to do some surgery here. I'll move this right here. And for this one, Q2 is not final anymore, and Q1 and Q0 are final. And so now I want to answer some questions about how does the language of these complement machines relate to the language of these original machines? So I want to answer this one first because it's pretty easy. And the thing that you should notice here is that the machine itself looks like a DFA already. And we know from before that DFAs, if you apply this complement operation to them, will give you a DFA for the complement language. So the language in this case, so, so let's actually name these machines as M1, M2, M3. And I'm going to name the complement languages M1 bar, M2 bar, M3 bar. And what we can see immediately is that for the second machine, oops, we have that the complement of the language of M2 is equal to the language of M2 bar. So the, if we, the actual complement of this language is this machine right here, because well, when you apply the complement operation to a DFA, you always get a DFA for the actual complement. And so you may be thinking, okay, well, don't you get the exact same thing for these other two machines, M1 and M3? What I'm going to show you is that know that this is not the case. And I'm going to start with M3. So notice here that there are some transitions that are missing. And also, look at Q0. It has a non-deterministic choice right here. There's a zero and a zero right here. So let's actually think about what this is. So this machine right here doesn't accept all strings because it accepts only the strings that end in zero one. And we can clearly see that. Because if you don't end in zero one, you're gonna either get stuck in this state or in this state. If you ended in zero one, you had to have en entered Q2. Well. So it doesn't accept the string, empty string, for example. But now look at this machine right here. We still have this non-deterministic choice of the zero here and the zero here, which means that I could, if I wanted to, just stay in Q0. I don't even have to bother going to one of these other two states because of this non-deterministic choice. And this state is a final state. So this machine actually right here is accepting sigma star. So what does this actually tell us right here? It tells us that this machine actually accepts more strings than what the complement should get. So this tells us that the complement of M3 is strictly contained within the machine that we actually made. So the complement of this thing, which shouldn't have all strings, is a subset of this one, which does have all strings. So, in fact, this tells us that the complement operation just doesn't work all the time with NFAs. But you may be thinking, okay, well, is it the machine th that we produce always going to be a superset of the actual complement that we really need? And it turns out that that's not the case either. So let's look at this example right here. So what is this machine really accepting? Well, it's accepting all the strings that is either the empty string or they, um, yeah. So it's alternating between ones and zeros here. 
right? So let's see. So what is it? So it must start with a zero if it's not empty and end with a one and it always alternates. Okay, so now let's think about what this machine is actually doing. So again, it's going to be alternating zeros and ones, and it doesn't accept the empty string, which is a good sign. So let's see, what does it actually mean? So let's look at the complement of this thing. So the complement of M1, the, the real complement that we should really accept, is the set of all strings such that W starts with a one and ends with a one or similarly with uh, zeros. And, and also it doesn't alternate. And that's something I should also say here. And does not alternate. It, it's a rather long description, but <laughs> it, 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 bear with me here. So what do we have here? So what we can see here is that this language, let's look at this. So it starts off with a zero. In order, the string has to start with the zero in order to even get to the state to start with. But in order to return to this state, it has to end with a zero too because there's no self loop here. So this machine right here accepts only strings that start with a zero and end with a zero and not even all of them. Well, this one, includes all strings that start with start and end with a zero and actually some more but the the crucial thing is that this one doesn't accept all of those so we can actually get this behavior which is that the complement of the the real complement that we really should get contains everything that this machine actually made which is the language of m1 bar so in fact, what we can actually see here pretty succinctly is that we have all three different possible things that can happen. With DFAs, it's always going to be equal, and with NFAs, it could be any one of these things. So the takeaway message here is if you want to get the complement of an NFA, do either you have some crazy method that works, or just convert it to a DFA and then apply complement to the DFA uh, then and there. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you have any other NFAs that produce weird behavior like this. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the growth of the channel. If you want to contribute additionally, there's a Patreon link and a Discord server in the description. And as always, I'll see you next time.